Hey guys, it's TF Nut. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another action figure review. This is going to be of the Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Arts, Naruto Shippuden, Sakura Haruno, Inheritor of Tsunade's Indomitable Will. I got my figure, I think a little over a week ago from AmiAmi, Ami, and after getting this figure and telling some of my friends who watch Naruto that I have it, they told me there's only one proper response I need to make when it comes to a figure of a character like this. That was a joke. I'm just kidding. All of you Sakura fans, please don't roast me in the comments just yet. I'm sure some people who have said for years that Sakura is trash. Some of that is, of course, subjective. And some of that is just over-exaggeration. But hey, guess what? I finally actually started Naruto. I'm into the main series right now, you know, when they're kids. I'm only like five episodes in. But so far, what I've seen, it's actually pretty good. I'm enjoying it so far. So I hope I keep liking, uh, liking it over time. And again, this figure here. It's really special because I think we did not get a Sakura in the original SH Figure Arts Naruto line. So a lot of people who've been wanting Sakura for years, we finally have one. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the patch. I've wasted enough of your time. SH Figure Arts in the top left. Really cool pink design throughout the whole box here. There's a pink backdrop as well as the character. As you can see in the box, some of the contents that she comes with there. On the right, you can see an image of the figure right there. Bottom half here does have the Tamashii Nations quality sticker, Sakura Haruno, inheritor of Tsunade's Indomitable Will. Studio Piro, I again don't know if I'm saying that studio correctly. Tamashii Nations, Bandai and Naruto Shippuden logos. On this side, again, it just says the character's name. The top there, SH Figure Arts, image of the character with a smiling face. On this side here, you get a full body image of the character uh, in figure form, of course. And then on the top there, SH Figure Arts in Sakura again. Not really much on the top here except for that pink design sh figure arts bottom here there's an image of the figure as well as again her name in the sh figure arts line here's a wide shot of the back of the packaging you zoom up a little bit you have all these different poses and different accessories that you can use for sakura and then bottom half here you have a lot of stuff that unfortunately i don't understand i think it's a lot of warnings and stuff about the bandai spirits website you know the support website barcode in case you need it ages 15 and up warning right there too let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging Here's Sakura out of the box. Honestly, a pretty sick figure so far. I just took her out of the box, so I don't see any problems yet. Time will tell, though. Let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories that she comes with, then we'll take a closer look at the figure. She comes with an instruction booklet like pretty much every imports figure. As you can see, it shows off some of the different accessories, how to use them, as well as how to prevent paint rubbing on certain joints. Not much information on the back you need to know about. And here's a wide shot of all the accessories that she comes with, which is a decent selection here. First of all, we have this angrier kind of stoic expression. She has a very neutral face packaged, you know, on the figure. So this is a little bit angrier with a nice frown, which has some pretty good color in there. And there's not much paint to go on in that frown, but they did it pretty well. Printing the eyes is very nice. I really like those teal eyes. They look really good. Nicely squinted eyebrows. Pretty much every face has decently sculpted ears they're not the most detailed thing in the world but they're still pretty good I mean, they look like ears at least so that's enough for me it's a more happier open mouth expression that has actually a really good um didn't notice this before there's slight white right there for the teeth it doesn't mix in with the pink of the tongue or the red of the roof of the mouth or on the skin tone at all so the paint on there is very good again really nice printing on the eyes with slightly raised eyebrows there we also have this more screaming face which you can even see the teeth you know the paint and detail and whatnot on the teeth even better here so that's really sick looking i like how that looks a lot with that again they just you know very small areas where they have to get this paint in there and they don't mess it up so i dig that a lot they're three for three so far in the naruto line and some other sh figures that have been released lately when it comes to open mouth you know paint variation and whatnot and then we do have this uh, very comedic, angry face with no pupils at all, just white eyes, uh, exaggerated, gritting teeth. Very funny here. I dig that a lot. I'll go well with Naruto's dumb looking face that he comes with, you know, one of those comedic faces. And she has a good number of hands. Uh, granted, because she's wearing gloves, they're not the most detailed things in the world, but they get the job done. You know, they look fine. These are these more um, relaxed, you know, uh, hands where you just kind of see the palms pretty good looking these open sprawled out hands with more separated fingers uh if it's molded in black paint it looks good and if it's painted it's even better i'll have to be quite honest uh because i can't tell so they they mix the paint or the way it's sculpted is mixed really well to where it's um 
you just can't tell. So I, I really dig how they did the approach of these hands. And then we do have this more, um, this is more of a clasp hand. She only comes with one, just the left hand. And I think it's mostly meant for recreating that pose where she's holding her fist, as you saw in the box. Would have been nice to have uh, had a additional right hand, but you know, this is cool so far. And then I'm probably gonna get this wrong, but this effects piece here, I believe is Cherry Blossom Clash. I could be completely wrong. Please let me know down in the comments uh, if I am wrong. But we do have this like, for the rest of the Naruto figures that come with effects pieces, really cool like frost white paint apps on the tip here, or really just on the end here, not really on the tip. Where is this, this teal translucent, um, you know, teal plastic with some nice waves in the plastic. And then you do have, you know, the inside here. It's very similar to if you own the Yuji Itadori figure, those effects pieces, it's similar to that because you... All you really have to do, unlike Sasuke's, where you know to actually take the hand off and it's a peg for that effects piece, or a peg hole, I should say. You just pl place it on the hand right here, and it works fine. So with the neutral face here, it's done in a similar fashion as the other faces. So I don't need to go too much into detail here. All you need to know is a little bit of color in the lip right there, the teal eyes and the eyebrows, and all the printing on the eyes comes through really nice. I really like how they did the hair. It could look a little plain in some areas, but it kind of looks like it it was like molded or it has this matte finish on it so in person it actually looks pretty good the details on the waves and the lines in the hair and the spikes in the hair too all come through really nice you have the nice silver paint on the hidden leaf village band on top of her head with that nice symbol with black paint if i can zoom in a little bit and focus up there there we go so all that looks nice to me uh, sorry, move the camera. We do have, like the other two figures in the Naruto line, this hair piece that is pretty much sculpted or glued almost onto the back of the neck. So, you know, you move that around and some of the hair looks like it's moving a little bit. Um, so that's cool. You have these ties for her hair uh, headband right there. One thing I want to go ahead and mention is I really wanted to pop off the head for you know interchanging the faces but as you can see the neck wants to go with it so your best bet is to just you know pop off the face here it's the face you know it's the face pegs that go in you know inward instead of going up like naruto's i believe did so you know a lot of you will be familiar with how that works out now on to the rest of the figure one thing i want to mention is the shoulders that might be my biggest complaint it's just how exposed these joints are and they don't look great to me at least you know it's a similar flesh tone that they have molded those joints in and i can't really be it's not too fair to judge it because who knows whether sh figure arts have a similar thing let's take a look at sasuke's because i have no idea if sasuke's like inner shoulder joints have a you know exposed joint like that that's because, if you see here, so there's that joint that would be there. It's a little bit exposed, I think I can see right now, actually. But you have this sculpted piece because of a shirt that's covering that. So, because Sakura has this, you know, sleeveless shirt on, they can't really cover it up too well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't hate it. it. It could be, it could have been done a little bit better. I don't, I mean, I couldn't tell you exactly how they should have done it, but... It, I can forgive it for now. It just looks a little odd on the back of her shoulders. I like the logo or whatever this symbol is. The back here, again, I need to keep watching. It's got this really nice white paint on there. It does not splotch onto the red at all. One thing I want to mention is that they did attempt some shading. You can see this black shading throughout her chest and her neck piece. Um, you know, it, I actually think it's done really well. It's a lot darker towards the stomach and then it's brighter towards the chest. So I, I honestly think that variation is pretty decent. It could be better in a little bit of spot. Like it's a little bit more like some areas like this little separate shoulder piece here for the articulation. It's a little too red um, compared to like slight cut off where the black is. But I mean, actually there might even be, I might be an idiot and there might be a little bit of black shading in there. So they did such a good job with blending it all together that I can't even tell. So I, may be, I might be full of it right now. 
What I can say is, is also really good is the silver paint on the zipper and the way that they sculpt the zipper, all oh, that looks nice. Um, you have a little bit, I think Sasuke has the same problem. It has an exposed neck that they painted, but the, uh, you know, the neck, the actual neck and the face and all that, it's, you know, molded in this type of color for the plastic. So skin tone may not match too much, but there's not that much exposed skin right there around the neck, so it's not going to matter too much to me. We have more of this very consistent skin tone here with the pink elbow pads or whatever these are for the elbows. Not really elbow pads. There's where the, uh, you know, glove would be, and it is. I do feel some sculpted parts right there for separation from the skin tone into the black. Here's what the fists look like. Decent, you know, they're just very standard fists. And she's got gloves on, so you don't get, like, fingernails sculpted, of course, but uh, we all know why. So, not much I could ask for when it comes to fists. They did a pretty good job on these. Get down to the bottom half of the figure. I don't know what's going on with this skirt piece, exactly what it's called. But I really like the silver on the buckles and on the uh, zipper there, how it's slightly open. I dig that. Is that other buckle right there. The pink has a little bit of some, uh, on the sculpting here, there's a little bit of some wrinkles, of course. Uh, I, there might be a very tiny bit of shading of like darker pink up towards where it gets close to the stomach and then down around here towards the bottom of this skirt piece. I can't really tell that well on the back either. So, um, yeah, I just, I just don't know where there is actually shading and where not. I guess that's a good thing that it all blends in together. Um, let me turn on the brightness a little bit because I think there might be a very, and I mean very dark, uh, slight dark scuff right there. That's a little disappointing, but it's not super noticeable. I might be able to just rub that off with my finger. I don't know yet. I'm not going to attempt it during this part of the review yet. I like what they did with the wraps around her leg. We also have this nice pouch right there, which has some decent sculpting. A little bit of a, it's mostly a black sculpt of or a black molded plastic, of course, but we have a little bit of a button molded right there. I'll just go ahead and talk about this thigh cut because, you know, it's slightly, the way that these, you know, wraps are wrapped around, thigh cut here is a little bit lower than how this one's a little bit raised. Consistent flesh tones, with the rest of the figure and the you know, like the arms and the face and whatnot. Here are the shin guard. Well, there's really high boots for shin guards. And at the back here, I guess that's where like the straps would be done. That's cool. There's a little bit of a line at the back right there. Other than that, on the front of the ankles, or you know, on the calves and ankles, this is just a basic black sculpt. The toes come through really nice, I think. They look a little, I don't want, um, I won't say they look messy when it comes to the sculpting, but like you bend that and that exposed skin is right there. That can look a little bad if you get a certain pose where like it's bent like, I don't know. I, I, it's mostly going to be hidden because when it's bent down like this, it's going to be touching the ground. So it's not going to matter too much. <clears throat> and I had a friend who finally got an SH figure arts figure a few months ago. It was like his first one and, uh, and it had heels on. But it has toe hinge like a lot of their figures. And he said he didn't like how unrealistic that is because you can't really bend the toes and heels. Uh, first of all, uh, not entirely sure how accurate that is because I do not wear, wear heels. But in Sakura's case, since she does a lot of action, I think you can forgive it with this one here when it comes to, you know, toe. She, she does, again, she moves around a lot. She does a lot of action. So bending toes, even if she's in heels, should be fine. This is what the bottom of the feet look like. And I actually dig all the detail on the bottom. It looks very realistic. So I, I need to get a rotating stand, man. I want to do a, a proper 360. Let's get Sasuke out of here. I want to do a proper 360 uh, eventually and just, you know, without holding it with my wobbly arms showing off. The 360 look of this figure that thing i was mentioning about the toe hinge for heels i brought that up because i really don't care if i'm being honest i don't really care that much if a action figure has heels and has a toe hinge some people do to each their own 
Sakura has about the same amount of articulation as Sasuke and Naruto, I'm pretty sure. She has a ball peg system up into the head, as well as this ball joint in the body here. So it allows for all this different range of motion going forward, back, side to side, rotation. That back part of the hair here snags a little bit when you're rotating, so just be careful. You mostly have no problem rotating at the neck, though. Really nice ball jointed shoulders that act like butterfly joints. So it goes forward and back like so. You can pivot a little bit up and down. And, you know, I was mentioning the exposed arms earlier, how that, you know, the back here looks like a problem. But you get really good range of motion going up in the shoulder. So that's awesome. Upper arm swivel, double jointed elbows, which is a little bit tight on the upper part here. But it still works pretty well. You do have the traditional Tamashi wrist pegs swivels here hinges and you can swivel it around to make it go up and down if you really wanted to ball jointed waist well right here as well as in the chest it's not as good movement wise in the chest it's mostly for ab crunching you have better rotation in the hips so this is the all this range of motion and you get a little bit better side to side going into the chest too but that is the range of motion going back and you can see that the uh skirt piece is you know i feel like the plastic here might overlap on the red, so I need to be careful. So that's about what you're going to get crunch-wise. So, uh, you know, rotation here, I did the side-to-side -side pivots. So honestly, really good articulation in the torso. Now, despite having these buckled pieces, she actually, you know, can move these forward really well all the way out. Uh, back, not really that much. I think the butt sculpt is getting in the way. She, uh, she does have, a, you know, splits there, upper thigh swivel. We also have a double joint, uh, double joint knee swivel right here at the ankle. Up and down is really good. Ankle rockers as well as toe hinge. So I brought out a good number of figures for a size comparison here. Right next to her on each side is the rest of Team 7, the updated figures that we have in the Naruto line, which is Sasuke, of course, and Naruto, who people have been saying Naruto is just a little too tall compared to the other two. I think they're right, but again, I haven't gotten to Shippuden yet, so... I don't entirely know for myself how accurate that is. Farther under left, no bar from the SH figure art due to Kaisen line, who I think is a tiny bit taller than Sakura. I don't know how accurate that is because they're two different series. Uh, similar thing here with Gohan, since his hair is a little bit taller. He uh, is going to be taller than Sakura. And then I have some Hasbro figures that I usually bring out, Black Suit, Spider-Man, and Mando. They're going to be a little bit taller than SH figure arts. Overall, this is a really nice figure. And for you Naruto fans who have been wanting an SH figure arts Sakura for years, we finally have one as well as the updated versions of Naruto and Sasuke. We're also getting the updated Kakashi, of course. We have that event exclusive Madara, which I'm going to have to pass up on because I had to make a card payment recently, and that hurts my wallet, unfortunately. But hopefully this means that Tamashii Nations will commit a little bit more to the Naruto line, give us some characters that they haven't made yet, as well as some updated characters. Sakura here is really nice. She may not come with as much stuff as maybe Sasuke, but she is the, mo the middle expensive out of the three with... Naruto being the least expensive and Sasuke being the most. It's still a really nice figure with lots of great articulation. Pretty good paint. It's mostly molded plastic for like the skin tones and other parts. But she does have some shading in the shirt and maybe in the skirt. I can't entirely tell. But you know the faces and whatnot all that comes through really well. It's a very fun figure. Pretty affordable too so you're not breaking the bank too much. She's a little over 50 bucks like 55 bucks. That's how much I paid for her on AmiAmi. It's sold out there right now but hopefully they'll release some more there soon and there's some other places you can pre-order i'll leave uh leave down in the description below thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already comment down below what you think about the figure what you think about the review leave a like share amongst your friends follow me on instagram for more content over there and i'll see you guys later